Coach, uh, obviously new season, new start to the season. Um, big uh, conclusion that maybe didn't go your way last year. So what, yeah. what are we doing? What are we working on right now as we prepare uh, for a new change here? I mean, the reality is if we don't win the national championship, you know, there's a party that's going to think it didn't go your way. And then you have to realize even if you did win the national championship, you know, you have to turn the page. It's a new year. It's a new group. It's a combination of returners, um, high talented recruits, um, and guys with goals and visions and dreams. So, I mean, for me, you know, nothing changes on that front. Um, where the bar is set, what we're trying to accomplish as a program. Uh, but you got to take a big step back. And you got to slow down um, and stick to the process. And first week in the scrimmages, and, and let's let's see where we're at. You have so many new faces. Logan was talking about the competition really everywhere, and, and that's good. That's good. You like that, don't you? Yeah, I, I, I think it first starts with the returners. There's a lot of older returners, which is exciting, you know, for I think a lot of college coaches in today's world, but especially a college baseball coach where, you know, we just 20 rounds and we can lose them uh, at the age of 21, and that's their junior year usually. So for, for you know, a coaching staff to have the older players when, when you go around the field and you talk about Isaac Humphrey, JT Benson, Logan Beard, um, Ryan McCoy, even Eddie King now in his third year here. Um, Evan Webster, Caleb Corbett, Riley Phillips, the older pitching staff. I, you know, that's a good feeling. Add in, as you mentioned, the, the young talent, the couple of transfer portal guys, and Logan's right. We got a lot of competition, you know, which is which is what they need. I've always said, as an amateur, you need somebody standing next to you, you know, knowing that they could take your job at any moment. That helps you become your best. It helps each other, and I think competition's been at the forefront of this program. In 22, the message you had for that team was kind of reset the standard after you guys missed the tournament last season. Uh, both Logan and Carson said that you get, you've kind of implemented that same message this year, but it's a lot more player-driven. What have you seen out of the players from uh, from this year, and how has that kind of impacted the team culture with both players have mentioned it's a lot different than the years past? Yeah, I think, you know, you're right that the players are going to drive a message that they feel – um, is important to them. This is a different spot than we were coming off um, where we just didn't finish that one year. And last year was just bizarre. I, I think you saw us at our best um, the first half of the year, and we were a top 10, top 20 program and felt like we had a chance to make a run. And then you obviously saw us at our worst. And, and I don't ever want to just blame it on injuries because as coaches, we're responsible no matter what the reason is. So we do, we do go back to the drawing board, but we feel like we're in a different spot um, because coming off the Super Regionals halfway through the season last year, and now, yes, we got to stay healthy. I mean, I don't, you know, there's no way around it. The great teams have star power. Their stars are healthy, and, and that is part of our responsibility as our coaching staff, our training staff, our strength and conditioning staff. We have to keep these guys healthy. So we did tweak some things. Um, you know, but again, it's it's just stick to the process, man. Let's just let's throw strikes, let's make plays, um, let's allow the competition to do its do its course, and let's prepare to get off to a good start. You mentioned throwing strikes. The pitchers, how do you you like what you've got in the bullpen and potentially on the mound? Yeah, start? I I I know Coach Williams um, and our staff feel really good about the talent and the depth. Uh, it's you know what that rotation is going to look like and who the closer is going to be and. And sometimes it's good and bad. I've always said it's nice to go into a season and say, yep, Reed Detmers, Bobby Miller, and Nick Bennett is our weekend rotation. I, I, I look forward to years like that, and we'll have some years like that. But right now, it's a lot of talented arms. Um, and so you feel like you have plenty of candidates to start, especially on the weekend. And you have a handful of candidates that can close and, and get the last three outs. But, you know, at least knowing today, in January, we've got – We've got depth, we've got talent, and as we talk about competition, we, we've got guys competing. So we're, we're going to get their best here in the next month. Dan, you've mentioned a couple of times the, the talent in the young in the young talent that you have. But with the veterans you have coming back, how difficult will it be for that young talent to even get out there and, 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 and make impact for you because you do have so much veteran leadership? Yeah, they'll get out there. I mean, we're going to need the freshmen, the new guys to help us. I just, it's our job as coaches to kind of uh, tone down their expectation, make sure they realize this is a process, make sure they realize 
this is a long season. We'll, we'll have plenty of stories as to when Corey Ray emerged as a star or Nick Solak emerged as a star or even the Reed Detmers and the Bobby Millers. They, they just didn't step out day one. Uh, Brendan McKay did something that most college baseball players don't do. So, hey, if we got a Brendan McKay in the group, I'll be more than happy to coach that guy. But the reality is it just, again, it's a process, and it takes some time. So that's our job as coaches. But that's also the job of some of the older players to manage the expectations of the younger guys. And when the balls flip to you, run out there and get outs. And when you get a chance to be in the lineup, compete to help this team win. You also, it's kind of become a rite of spring that you have a guy who redshirted the year before who comes out and does something that year. Do you have a couple guys with that potential this year? Well, it, I think it's a combination. Um, and, and we're not just talking about the year after the redshirt. I still look at Eddie King, who, even though he's a junior, this is really his second year of playing. Yeah, Ryan McCoy came from a junior college. This is his second year at the Division One level in our system. And, and when you study our program, it's been the second year has been the breakout year. We've had our, our freshman All-Americans, and, and obviously we talk about a Brendan McKay. But I think our program, those guys on the All-American wall, it's been built on the jump they made from year one to year two, and then hopefully they continue to make that jump. So I, I think there's several guys that, you know, even Isaac and Benson and Beard, guys that redshirted that first year, now they're getting that third full year in instead of just that second full year in. And so I think everybody's got a chance to, to raise their game and, and, and take it to another level. Coach, it's no secret with the ACC play that this is going to be a very tough conference uh, from top to bottom, really, once again. So what, what does it look like right now as you're prepping, knowing that's still down the road, uh, but in the back of these kids' minds that they will have to face some of the best teams in the country? I, to me, it's exciting, um, you know, playing at Virginia last year and looking out their outfield wall, it dawned on me that we had the same amount of ACC championships as they had. Great program. I don't know how many years they've been in the league, and I'm not here to knock them. They're phenomenal. But I smiled and thought, we have as many ACC championships as they have. We've been in the league like eight years. I have to realize, as much as we want to win an ACC championship, it's okay if you don't, because as you 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 led to it the league is loaded and so yes we're going to try to win an ACC championship but that doesn't mean you can't go to Omaha and you still can't win a national championship as we've seen from our our conference friends um, it, it can be done so we just gotta not get too high obviously if we're rolling in the league but really the key is don't get too low if you get beat up in this league from time to time learn from it grow bounce back um, and we got to stay out of that, you know, we just, when, when it spiraled out of control last year, we, we just got to be more consistent. After the end of last season, you utilized the transfer portal more so than you have in the past. How has that kind of impacted this team's dynamic, camaraderie, culture, and all of that? Uh, we, we had to fill some holes. And, and the reason it kind of spiraled out last year, right, we just, too many injuries behind the plate and to lose three catchers in a season. It was hard to overcome that. So I think when you talk about our transfer portal, it starts with Luke Napleton. We had to get an older catcher. Love our young guys, Deerling and Klein and some of the new guys we brought in, but you can't be in a situation where we just run out of catching. I mean, it's just bizarre. It's like running out of quarterbacks, you know? You just, how, how, how are you gonna win if you lose at certain positions? And so it started with Luke. Um, then we wanted to get a middle infielder and we got Dylan Hoy. And then, of course, you know, we got some star power on the mound, two older pitchers that only add to our pitching depth. Um, and so I, I, think, I think we did a nice job in the transfer portal. But again, where we're at, it's going to come from the returners and the development of, of the new guys. And speaking of Hoy, like, what does it say about him knowing that he's a grad transfer, but he's someone that was elected as a team captain? That's impressive. Um, I've had a few sophomore captains over the years, so they went through a tough freshman year. They were voted, but that, that means they've been here like a year and a half. And this guy was voted a team captain. He'd been here like four months. It's impressive, you know, because I, I hold a lot of a lot of clout as to how the players feel about each other. Like I always say, you, you can't fool your teammates. They're with you like it seems like 24-7 roommates in the locker room, in the weight room. And so it's impressive how much respect he got. Um, and so I'm, I'm, I feel very fortunate and blessed that – we picked up not only talented kids, but obviously respected 
good, good, hardworking kids. How are you health wise? Now you mentioned the two catcher. You mentioned the young catchers that were injured last year. How are you health wise going into this? Official start of practice. Yeah, we're we're heading in the right direction. Uh, we we don't have a hundred percent healthy. Um, we might have a guy or two out for the year from lingering injuries from from the summer or whatever. But that was obvious. Um, those two catchers are working their way back and Klein and Veerling. Um, they're not a hundred percent yet, but they're getting there. Um, Noah Bush was a talented transfer arm that we're fifty fifty. Will he be ready to go this spring or not? We'll see. But. You know, Carson Liggett is coming off the hip, and we feel like he'll be 100%. Riley Phillips coming off some issues. We feel like he'll be 100%. So guys that maybe haven't been 100% the past few years, uh, they are today. But I, I can tell you as a coach, I, I, I lose sleep, or I feel like it's my responsibility to prepare for the end. That's what was so frustrating about last year. I, I always feel like I have a, a backup shortstop. I always feel like if this guy goes down – we can still win a national championship. Like, I, I have to be prepared. That's what really frustrated me last year. Was we, we had, and I was playing three catchers. Like, I, I don't just play one guy. Like, and, and hey, for schools that can do it, good for them. But I always think if that guy goes down, your season's over. I mean, we've always played multiple catchers. When Will Smith was here, when Henry Davis was here, when Dal Dalton Rushing caught 50% of the time when he was the first pick of the Dodgers that year. So just. So this year I have to be even more prepared that, you know, when guys go down, let's make sure we got guys ready to step in. When you have so many guys, you know, a couple of the transfer portal, the freshmen, almost 50% of your roster is new. How well are they, you know, meshing together off the field as well? Because obviously that's important as well. It, it's partly our job as coaches. Um, what we do as a program, you know, we, we talk about culture, we talk about connection, all the things we set up throughout the fall and the winter. But that's also the responsibility of the players um, and, and – we encourage them. We coach them. You gotta, you know, grab these younger guys and connect to them. Thankfully, this year, you know, our four-year cycle was up, and we were able to take the team to the Dominican Republic. So, it couldn't happen at a better time in our program with guys coming out of the transfer portal, coming off the tough year, um, perspective, maturity, growth, wisdom. There's a lot you can gain, as I've learned from taking our team to the Dominican. I look at those old pictures and all the current big leaguers that went to the Dominican over the years with us. So. I think that helped us a lot in, in a lot of fronts. What do you think of Juan Soto to the Yankees? <laughs> as, a, as a baseball guy, we need pitching, all right? So you got to help Garrett Cole. I, I like Juan Soto, but if you don't get pitching, it's going to be hard to, to succeed at the level the Yankees expect you know, to, to be at. Cool. Thanks.